we have heard this story so many times for those of us who are Christians. This is my 57th Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. My 57th time commemorating this story. And we'll be commemorating it together in a parking lot at St. Stephen's on Sunday morning. But for those of you who are engaging this at another time, thank you so much for taking the time to commemorate this particular moment, this extraordinary day, this extraordinary centerpiece of our faith. So much of our church here comes down to this cross, this place. The cross for us means many things, and in the Gospel of Mark, there's a lot to consider. In our Mark Bible study this year, uh, during Lent, uh, some nine wonderful people helped spark my own imagination and brought me to an understanding of this study and this book. Why was Jesus crucified? Mark answers it several ways. On a close level, on a close text level, it's simply because his friends abandoned him and betrayed him. Judas turned him in. Peter ran away. The disciples were not there at the foot of the cross, at least in the Gospel of Mark. He also died because there were forces beyond his control. There were enemies of faith, enemies of Jerusalem, enemies of a pure faith and understanding of the love of God in the world. And that was just something that the priests and the scribes could not contend with. They could not turn power over to this individual. Rome and Pilate could not turn power over to this person who was preaching a very radical understanding of faith and a very radical understanding of God. He died because he was selfless, because of his self-giving love, that he went to the cross because he knew he had to for others, for indeed all creation. And that kind of zooms us out to this place where Jesus died so that God no longer has to be distanced from humanity and from creation. I oftentimes say that the incarnation is sufficient for me. The fact that you showed up was enough. The idea that you could possibly have taken this upon yourself, why? Well, the answer is God wants us to know that God is intimate with us and carries with him or her, however you want to interpret God. Well, let's just say God is God, right? God invites us to understand that God's love is so transcendent and so powerful and so intimate and so personal that God is willing to sacrifice God's own son, God's own self, to remind us of how much and how close God is. God is as close as my own breath and moments and always and certainly today when we commemorate this, the passion of Christ. We pause or try to pause for this entire week. We'll try to engage the Tenebrae service, a Taizé style prayerful service on Tuesday evening that brings us into an understanding of lament and what it means to exist in a place of sadness. We'll spend time together with an agape meal individually in our own homes on Thursday evening. And we'll talk about why Jesus used that Passover feast to initiate a new covenant with all of creation. We'll spend time on Good Friday at the church and we'll do the Stations of the Cross and walk through the pass Passion ourselves and share the story again. And then on Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, we'll gather together to move through the Passion and through the death to the wonderful resurrection that Christ brings to us. This is our holiest of times, Christians, my 57th Holy Week in my life. It's good to take the time to understand, to commemorate, to recall, and to experience the extraordinary poetry and emotions of this week, which always remind us of God's love, God's eternal love. May we take the time to recognize that love in our lives and reach forth with that same love to the lives of others. Amen.